My name is Chris, and today we're going to look at three simple things you can do to revitalize your passion for music. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! This video is sponsored by Skillshare. About a week ago, I was putting a tattoo of the iconic Lemmy Kilmister on my good friend Randy's leg to add his collection when we inevitably landed on the topic of music, and more specifically, vinyl records. The unavoidable conversation about Record Store Day had him in agreement with many of you about its lack of anything interesting and his unlikely attendance for this year's Black Friday event. This led to my asking about his latest purchases as I'd recently attended a record and CD collector show and I'd managed to score some excellent finds. Randy told me he actually hadn't been picking up that much lately in the way of new stuff and instead he was starting to get back into the music he had already with a listening system he's been using for years. I was intrigued with this idea and he went on to explain the details. Immediately, my mind went to this show and more specifically you, the viewer, as his simple idea led me to start thinking about how we as music lovers can get bored with not only our music on occasion but with our sound from our hi-fi systems as well. What sorts of things did I do when I was stuck in a music rut? How did I move past this and keep the passion for recorded music that I've had for so very long? I've been very lucky as of late to have a host of products for review for the show, so my hi-fi boredom hasn't hit in quite a while, but what if that wasn't the case for you? I mulled these thoughts over in my head and as I continued on with the tattoo, and by the end, I had a new idea for an episode. In trying to keep with the original spirit of Randy's simple system, which is number three on this list, I wanted to compile a short group of things that you can do for free that will help you shake that occasional funk that can come about when you're bored with what you have in home. My first suggestion may be the most contentious amongst many of you, but I recommend that you change it up. More specifically, change up the media to which you're listening. For me, the first signs that I might be in a music rut is that I'm not only listening to the same records all the time, but that I'm simply listening to records. All. The. Time. I have a fairly large CD collection and have found it to be a great help in enjoying music to vary the types of source media I'm using. If I'm reviewing a turntable and have been actively listening to a number of records to try to discern the details of what turntables can do, I tend to switch it up when the review is over to keep things fresh. I break out some CDs and just crank them up with no real regard to what the recording really sounds like or whether or not it's a hi-fi audio file recording. I take a good look through my back catalog to check out some things I haven't heard in a while and I simply let them rip. It's a refreshing change of pace that gets me back in the mood to not only enjoy my collection, but to have fresh ears so to speak when it comes time to either review another turntable or any other vinyl related product. Sure this sounds like a very simple thing, and it is, but when was the last time that you tried it consciously? This also works the other way around as well. Are you streaming all the time? Get your hands on some physical media and sit down with the liner notes. Take a look at the cover and really think about what inspired the artist to make that choice. Maybe you're inside all the time with vinyl and CDs. Get your ass out of the house and stream something while you take a walk. Sure, this might not be the most high quality sound, but so what? The idea isn't to scrutinize over every detail in music, it's simply to enjoy yourself. You may start to find that you're hearing things you hadn't before simply because you're not trying. Change up your listening source material and just relax and enjoy what's there. I think you'll be surprised at how freeing this can be. The second thing on this short list is to change it up. Yes, that's what I just said for the first thing, but this has to do with your audio equipment. The chances are high that you spend a good deal of time and money to put together the system with which you listen to your music. Speakers, an amp, a turntable, and most likely a phono stage, perhaps a CD player, and a digital stream or two. This stuff costs money, and try as we might, we tend to get bored with it on occasion. Unlike the simplicity of changing your listening material, it can be quite costly to try and change the sound of your hi-fi system, but it doesn't have to be. Try changing some simple things in your setup and seeing what you get. My first suggestion here would be your speaker placement. Are your speakers close to the wall? Are they close together? Are they close to other components? Try to change that. Pull them out in your room and see how that sounds. Many audio professionals have written at length about getting your speakers well into your listening area, but have you ever really tried it? You may even find that you don't like what you hear. Great! That's a result too. That's what you're after. Every room is different. Every set of speakers are different. Some are going to sound wonderful placed well into your room with a slight toe-in position, while others, believe it or not, are going to sound complete shit this way. The idea is to move them around in your space and see what you think. Tied directly to this change is your listening position. 
Where are you sitting? Are you in the near field with your speakers practically within touching distance of your seated position? What about the much more common practice of sitting too far away? I can't tell you how many systems I've seen in homes where the listener is at what seems to me to be a ridiculous distance from the speakers. Changing where you sit will have a definite impact on what you hear. If you're far away, simply cranking the volume isn't really going to bring out all the things you might otherwise hear if you sat closer to your speakers. Of course, if you're sitting too close, much of the improved soundstage might get washed away with the loss of some of the bigger dynamics that would be too loud in such a position. You may have tried both of these at length until you found Sheldon's perfect seating position. That's where I sit. <laughs> No, I sit there. <laughs> or you have no need or desire to change that at all. Okay, what about the other furniture in the room? Aha! We forget how impactful that can be as well. Do you have hard surfaces all over that are creating an echo in your room? Are you even aware if that's happening? Change it up. Move stuff around and see what kind of impact that has over your sound. Put pillows in different places. Try an area rug if you have one. Use a blanket if you don't. Move your head around the room in the corners and see what you hear. Perhaps putting some kind of room treatment there would be ideal. That can be free too with the aforementioned pillows and blankets. So you're on board with the media change and you've tried or will try moving things about in your space, but what's the deal with the Randy system? I'm glad you asked, but before we get into that, let me take a quick minute to talk about this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Listen, we all know commercials suck, but for me, nothing has been more irritating as of late than me right in the middle of a show on YouTube, only to be interrupted by a completely random and irrelevant commercial that breaks the flow of the episode and offers nothing in return. This is why I don't have YouTube ads in the middle of my videos. So rather than stuff a meaningless ad down your throat, I'd much prefer to show you something that you might actually like and that also resonates with me. Enter Skillshare. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, they are an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people alike. If you're like me, and I know I am, learning new things all the time is almost as much of a passion as hi-fi systems and record collecting. I've already started a deep dive into several classes in hopes of elevating the quality of this channel, which clearly benefits us both. After completing the Marcus Brownlee class on YouTube success, I took a look at another content creator named Aaron Palabiab about making engaging YouTube videos. While I knew much of what was being discussed, I found the presentation entertaining and engaging which kept me tuned in the entire time and helped me pick up some new tricks as well. I'm also very interested in video production and lighting, so that's definitely next on my list as I love pouring as much passion and detail into these videos as possible with the information that I share with you. Learning new techniques makes it that much easier to improve. Skillshare isn't just for people who want to be public content creators either. If you're into photography, illustration, creative writing, even marketing and productivity, Skillshare has a class for you taught ad-free by creators who really know their stuff. And right now, if you're one of the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description below, you'll get a free one-month trial. Not seven days, not even 14 days, which is their standard, but a free one-month trial to check out all the classes and topics that Skillshare has to offer. So, as you're on your way down to the comments section to talk about these methods discussed today to help you enjoy your music more, make sure you click on the link in the description box to take advantage of this offer, and thanks to Skillshare for making it possible. With the business side of things handled, let me share with you this quite simple yet effective idea that can put a little bit of the record collecting excitement back in your life without having to buy a new record. While Randy gave no name for his system, the idea is to revisit your records in alphabetical order. Now, before you say, I don't have time for that, or this isn't anything new, you're wrong. And you're right. You do indeed have time for this because the idea isn't to listen to every album you own in alphabetical order. And you're right because this probably isn't a new idea. It was, however, new to me, and so I thought it may be new to some of you. Quite simply, start with the letter A in your record collection and pick out a few records. Perhaps records you plan on listening to all on the same day, or perhaps spreading it out over the course of the week. The key here is to pick up albums that you rarely, if ever, play. Don't just go for your long favorite classics that you know front to back. Pick up an album that you haven't even looked at in months, maybe years. We all have them, no matter how big or small our collection, and it goes a long way to encouraging you to appreciate the music you already own. Maybe you'd prefer to pick one record from A, B, and C in a single day and give them a listen. You could pick just one album from each letter until you're done and then go back and start again instead of listening to several records from each letter in each listening session. That's the idea here. Change it up. Break out of your listening rut and try something different that will have you looking at your music collection from a different angle. 
Are you listening to a lot of jazz? Break out some Motorhead. Are you on an alternative kick from the 90s lately? Take a deep drive into some soundtracks. There are as many ways to approach this as there are albums in your collection, so why not give it a try? With these three simple and free steps, you should have no trouble enjoying the current collection of music you have for a very long time to come. I'd very much like to know what your methods are of breathing some new life into your music listening, and if you've ever tried any of the things that I've talked about here today. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I look forward to next time. That's where I sit.